more than. Um, I think I want to make it clear because Senator Kangata has tried to give the impression that the reason why he's been relieved of his responsibility as the chief whip in the House has got something to do with the letter that he wrote to the President at the beginning of this year. I want to be able to explain to you that that is not the case, at least not the case directly. We had a meeting with Honorable Kangata uh, as a, uh, with the leadership of the House, actually the leadership of Parliament, there were eight of us, and we reached some conclusions because we did feel that whatever opinions he had to make is within his right as a member of the Jubilee Party and he should not be uh, vilified or punished for that. But the way in which he did them was what was the question that we thought he should realize that there is decorum, there are ways of addressing these issues when you want to talk to the leadership of the party and especially if that leadership happens to include His Excellency the President. After that meeting, we had another meeting at the Jubilee headquarters in which we invited him. He refused to come. And we discussed a few other confidential issues in which we put him online to be able to talk to us. But in a most unfortunate way, he decided to discuss what we discussed in closed meetings outside to the media. That was his biggest failure as far as leadership is concerned. You don't kiss and tell. You don't kiss and tell. When we meet as a leadership, you're supposed to keep the confidentiality of the meeting, keep the confidentiality of what it is we have discussed, but if after talking, immediately you go out and expose those, that, those who you talked with and what you said with them, then that is not acceptable and that is his biggest failure as a leader and therefore the rest of the leadership in the Senate are not able to trust him going forward. How then can they ever talk freely when he's there, when they don't know what he's going to say outside to the media and to his friends? So it is that breach of confidentiality which has made his position untenable. I think that's all I have to say about uh, that. If you have questions, you, you have may. Numbers. There, there's an assertion that has been made that you did not have the requisite numbers, and according to their calculation is that Jubilee has 38 senators, and if you were to get him out, you need a resolution by 20 members, and you, according to your own calculation, you had only 15. What did you say about that? Well, um, it's a little bit difficult for me to get into a debate with people who have already said they are not members of Jubilee Party and uh, I cannot be really going back and forth in terms of what they have calculated and what conclusions they have come to. Uh, it would be inappropriate for me to get to engage in that. Well, they, ex they have exited. What number did you remain with? And what number exactly needs to be there so that such a decision is made? We have a way of ensuring that uh, we get the signatures that we require for the resolution. We have a resolution which we'll be presenting to the Senate. The leadership of the Senate is going to present that to the Senate. And it is not something that we are going to be able to debate with people who say they are not members of the Jubilee Party because they have another party in the public domain. We will be presenting our position the leadership of the Senate will be presenting our position in Parliament. That is the next arena in which this has to be presented, not with the media. For the sake of clarity, just, just how many? Yes. Uh, well, first of all, I have my uh, 
major, majority whip, the deputy majority whip is the one who is working with those figures. I'm waiting for the figures after everybody has appended their signature. Then maybe we'll be able to announce it later in the day because, for example, there's one or two members who could not attend uh, because they are very ill and uh, they ask that the papers be taken to them to sign. But going on a back and forth with the people who are members of UDA to discuss matters of Jubilee is a big joke. So you do not have exact numbers? That you uh, look, you can try to push me in that direction, my friend, but you're not going to succeed. I happen to have been a journalist like yourself. You'll ask that question in a hundred different ways. You'll get the same answers. Let's not waste everybody's time. Yeah, somebody else has another question. inside there. The list that has been signed, excluding, excluding those who are sick, when you want to your form, how many have you seen? I've not looked at the list yet. You'll get it from Parliament. On the last PG, I understand you also invited the Deputy President for today. Did you invite him? Uh, the invitation is done by the leadership in the House, not by myself. What exactly is the problem? Is the problem? Which, which you you just party. said that yet it's part of the Jubilee Coalition Again? through the PDR. <laughs> Uh, you are asking about UDA? Yes. Please ask the question again. The question is, UDA is a member of Jubilee Coalition through the PDR. What is the issue with Jubilee Party and Jubilee and the PDR, or rather the current UDA, yet it's a coalition partner? Have you seen the deed of the coalition at the Register of Political Parties? Please go and look at that, then you can come ask me that question. <laughs> Uh, it is of interest that Kangata is the one who invited the team when he was the deputy, he was the deputy whip to one Susan Kihika. And he's the one who invited, actually mobilized, to have a meeting that removed Kihika. Please ask Senator Kangata what is so different about this case. Can I ask you one final maybe? Can I? Yeah. Can I?